In calculus, we will be finding the derivative of inverse functions, and therefore it's important to know, one, what inverse functions are, two, how we find inverse functions, and three, what types of functions are non-invertible. Now, if we have a function that goes from our domain to our range, and a goes to three, b goes to one, c goes to two, then the inverse just undoes all of that. In other words, one now goes to b, two now goes to c, and three now goes to a. It just undoes everything that your function did. So if what a goes to three, in your inverse, that means that three goes to a. So an inverse function is a function that undoes another function. If an input x into the function f produces an output y, then putting y into the inverse function g produces the output x and vice versa. More directly, if we were to take the composition of f and f inverse, we would plug a into f. So let's actually think about this for a second. If we took f of f inverse of, let's say, 1. Well, f inverse of 1 goes to b. So here we have f of b. And then f of b goes back to 1. So what happens here is that we take our x value, we plug it into the inverse, that gives us the y value out, but then plugging the y value into your inverse just gives you back the x value because it goes backwards. It undoes itself. And so we have that g of f of x is x, if g is the inverse of f. So if you compose f and its inverse, it just leaves your x value unchanged because 1 would go to b and then b would go back to 1. Now a function f that has an inverse is called invertible. The inverse function is then uniquely determined by f and is denoted by f inverse. A relation can be determined to have an inverse if it is a one-to-one -one function. Now what is a one-to-one -one function? This right here is not a one-to-one -one function, mainly because it fails the horizontal line test. What you have to remember here is that if we were to actually find the inverse of this function, that means that when we plugged in 0.5, in our function you plug in 0.5, we get zero. However, if we were to plug in zero into the inverse, we would get 0.5. Well, how can we figure this out? Well, check this out. What we can do is we just flip the whole thing on its side. This is really what finding an inverse does. It just kind of flips it on its side. You see, because if we wanted to look at what x values give us 0, well, it looks like negative 1, about negative 0.5, 0.5 and 1.4. Well now we can plug in 0 and see what uh, y values give us 0. Here it looks like oh about negative, uh, negative 1, about negative 0.5, 0, 0.5 and about 1.4. So if we wanted to take the inverse all we have to do is just flip over our function. However this means that this actually isn't a function anymore. So, in order for a function to be invertible, it therefore has to pass the horizontal line test, which is that at any point, if you make a horizontal line, it only passes through one point. What this means, of course, is that a parabola, for example, is not invertible. However, half a parabola is invertible. So if we took a parabola like this, this parabola is not invertible because it fails the horizontal line test. However, all we have to do is erase everything to the left of here. Boom. Well, actually, to the left of here. This is now invertible. How do you find the inverse of a function? Well, this function is invertible 
it's a line and therefore it passes the horizontal line test. Now, to find the inverse of this function, all we have to do is just switch x and y. By switching x and y, we therefore come up with our inverse. So, here's what we do. We write x is equal to 2 thirds y inverse minus 5. Now, keep in mind, this is not 1 over y. That's not what this notation means. This notation means the inverse of y. We can add 5 to both sides, so we have 2 thirds y inverse is equal to x plus 5. Now I can multiply both sides by 3 over 2 and we have y inverse is equal to 3 halves x plus 15 over 2. And this is the inverse of our function y. There it is. We found it by switching x and y and then solving for our new y. Now keep in mind that for a line, the derivative, or sorry, the slope of this line was 2 over 3. The slope of this line is 3 over 2. That will come in, importantly, later.